Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Colonel Chris Starling, and I'm the uh, Vice President and Chief Development Officer here at the Marines Memorial. And I'd like to welcome you to the historic Marines Memorial Theater as we celebrate the 241st birthday of the United States Marine Corps. We welcome all Marines and friends of the Corps to observe this time-honored tradition. I like to say that Marines were founded in a bar and they've been fighting ever since. <laughs> uh, before we start, uh, I'm going to uh, offer a brief invocation as the son of a Navy chaplain that makes me qualified. And as I was doing some uh, homework, I went back and I, I learned that 50 years ago, the Marines verse of Eternal Father, uh, that's really uh, our Navy hymn, uh, was written exactly uh, or copyrighted 50 years ago. And I wanted to use that as our invocation. So if you will uh, bow your heads in prayer. Eternal Father, grant we pray to all Marines, both night and day, the courage, honor, strength, and skill, their land to serve, thy law fulfill. Be thou the shield forevermore from every peril to the core. Amen. As you entered the theater, you might have noticed in the uh, corner by the door uh, an empty table draped in black. That lone table with the empty chair reminds us of our fallen comrades. As we gather to celebrate, we also take a moment to pause and reflect and the lone table and its contents are symbolic to us. A purple heart medal reflects the shedding of blood and the ebb of life in battle. The dog tags that are on that table are blank. They could bear the name of any one of us here tonight. The slices of lemon on the bread plate remind us of their bitter fate and salt upon the bread plate represents the tears of their families. The inverted wine glass reminds us that our Distinguished comrades cannot raise a toast, nor can they join us in the festivities of this evening. And a single lighted candle reminds us of the flame of eternal life and that their memory will be with us always. It is a, a small percentage of our population that chooses to wear the cloth of our nation and to go to foreign lands and fight our nation's enemies. And as a consequence of, of that choice, some have paid the ultimate price thereby joining the list of heroes who built the legacy of our American armed forces. For those of us who carry on that legacy, it's our solemn obligation to remember and honor our fallen. They may not be physically present, but they are with us in spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for a moment of silence in honor of our fallen comrades. Please be seated. I would like to also add a special note uh, to a dear friend and uh, a longtime pillar of this Marines Memorial Club, John Paulson, who we lost last month, a, uh, an absolutely wonderful human being, a Vietnam veteran who uh, received three Purple Hearts uh, in Vietnam and who was the chairman of the board here at the Marines Memorial and a, uh, a regular uh, site here. His wife, Diane, is with us tonight, and just a, uh, a special remembrance to John, who touched many of our lives in this uh, auditorium tonight. Before we start our program, and on behalf of General Myatt and the Board of Directors at the Marines Memorial, I'd like to quickly recognize a few uh, special guests. Uh, Susan Manheimer, the Chief of Police for San Mateo, is here. Her son is a Marine. Brigadier General Dave Odignan, the Commanding General of the 1st Marine Logistics Group, and he is uh, here with his Command Sergeant Major, uh, Troy Black, they are with us uh, this evening. Also Rear Admiral uh, Todd Sokolczuk, Commander 11th Coast Guard District, which is based right here in Alameda. And our good friend and uh, vocal advocate for veterans, he brought us uh, two great TV shows, Dirty Jobs and Somebody's Gotta Do It, he now has a wonderful podcast called The Way I Heard It that I love listening to. Mike Rowe is here again with us tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to begin our celebration with a musical performance under the direction of Eric Stratman.
featuring Richard Evans on the piano and vocals by Nova Jimenez and Susana Jimenez. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our talented musical ensemble to the stage as we mark the 241st birthday of the United States Marines. Well, I'm not going to start. I'm going to introduce you again uh, to Nova Jimenez and uh, the daughter of Joe Daig. And he's, he's a Marine and he's here in the audience. And uh, where are you, Joe? There he is, right here. And for those of you who were here a few years ago, uh, he actually wrote a beautiful song which his daughter's going to sing for you now. Thank you, my dad. 
Thank you so much. I'd like to invite my sister-in-law, Susana Jimenez, to sing a few folk tunes and American songs. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where we are to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, we'll be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we shan't be ashamed. To turn, turn, we'll be our delight, till by turning, 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 turning,
I have to follow that. <laughs> At least they're not children or dogs or pets. seen a summer day that slowly opens like a rose along a quiet road that wanders by and I have smiled and wondered where it goes I have stumbled through the night alone as any man can be then found a silent canyon full of stars and in my heart I heard them telling me I am home the gentle wind the rains that fall, the tallest trees, I'm part of it all. I've seen the silver mountain tops and golden prairies on my way. Now everywhere I go across the land, the sun and say I am home the gentle winds the rains that fall the tallest trees I'm part of it all I've dreamed of Eden all my life find it more and more each day. Now everywhere I go across the land, I stand so proudly in the sun and say, I am home. Every year, the present Commandant provides each command a message for all Marines past and present, their families and friends. Ladies and gentlemen, a message from the 37th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Robert B. Neller. Ask me what I was, I'll reply with what I've done. Those things others would not do, I did those rivers others would not swim I swam those hills others would not climb I conquered those bridges others would not cross I crossed I've celebrated I've mourned I have smiled and I've frowned. I have seen death and felt its warm breath. It did not faze me, for I was different. I was a warrior. You ask me what I was. It was my destiny. Until my last breath, to be a United States Marine, and my spirit shall live forever. Semper Fidelis, for I was, am, and shall forever be a United States Marine. 
The cohesion of a unit involves the physical, spiritual, cognitive connection of Marines in that unit because we are a team. And we remember the team, we remember the people we serve, we remember the hard times, I remember the good times. And so when you leave the Corps, as we're all going to do eventually one day, I think that's the thing people miss. They miss that feeling of being part of something bigger than themselves. You will sweat for each other, you'll bleed for each other if you need to. That's what, that's what true family is. You go through hard times together, you're there on the other end. So I have people I consider family that are, that are blood relatives. I have people I consider family that are friends. And I have a lot of people I consider family that are just Marines with me. When our way of life is threatened from the outside, we all come together as one from this diverse community that we have as Americans. This is about individuals coming together to find something bigger than self, to be a part of a team greater than self, preparing to go to combat, protect each other. On the battlefield, we don't leave any Marine behind. We stick together, come hell or high water. We know if one Marine's in trouble, that every Marine in earshot will be on his way there as fast as he can. Because the greatest honor, the greatest privilege of being a Marine is to fight alongside another Marine. The last thing you want to do when you leave the Marine Corps when you're off on independent duty, uh, you don't want to lose that connection. When you're in a stressful environment, combat environment, where people are getting hurt, you know that you could be hurt at any point in time. That becomes your safety net. Those guys become your safety net. And you're with them every day, day in and day out. And you get really close because that's who you, you lean on when things are really stressful. Some people will look at us like we're crazy, like why are y'all laughing about being in the field for three weeks and raining down and no food that was worth eating. It's something that as Marines, we understand that all the struggles that we go through strengthen us. It makes us tighter. When you're reduced to making the most of nothing, you build tight with your group and you get the job done. They're gonna be your friends for life. And they're the people that are gonna help you the rest of your life. And Marines are like that. Marines are going to, once you're a Marine, you're going to always help other Marines. You're going to help anybody, but you're really going to look out for each other. And that's why we got to stay connected. Always faithful and we're still, look at us. Yes, look at us. That's yes, right. Look at us. Look, you know, always, always. When we say once a Marine, always a Marine, the family's included in that conversation. For all those warriors who've fallen, their families remain our families forever. Generational interaction is so important. And whenever you have the opportunity to reach across the different generations of those who have worn our cloth, I think it's absolutely something you should do because it shows you how much the world has changed, how much war has changed, but really how Marines are still pretty much the same. So happy birthday, Marines. Wherever you find yourself tonight, forward deployed in harm's way on unit rotation overseas, at bases and stations around our Corps with family and friends, with our veterans and retired Marines. Enjoy each other's company, and remember we need you to be safe so that tomorrow we can be ready for whatever the world brings our way. And remember, protect what you've earned. Semper, Semper Fidelis. Fidelis. If you look at the Marines Memorial logo, you'll notice your club was founded in 1946, 70 years ago. The club opened its doors on 10 November 1946 on an evening like this for the Marine Corps birthday ball. We now share a short video to mark this historic occasion. This is the 70th anniversary of uh, Marines Memorial, and, uh, and I would just tell you, with you at the helm, General Myatt, I think General Vandegrift would be pretty proud uh, were he to come back here now and see us uh, 70 years later. This building was built in 1926. General Vandegrift had a vision of a living memorial, and the Marines that had been here who had a fondness for it, conceived the idea that they buy the Western Women's Club and make it into the Marines Memorial Club. In fact, he said that Marines Memorial should be a place where people can come and veterans can talk to veterans and do healthy things like work out and have a great social life. Tonight, uh, as you walked in, and you'll notice uh, on the stage, you'll see two Marines and a sailor. You're either in a bar in a longa po or you've arrived at the Schultz Lecture Series. Our lecture series, we will have only high-ranking military officers. 
That's different from what everybody else does. San Francisco was not too friendly a place. <laughs> Having once been a military town, and the military sort of abandoned us, everybody moved away, once again as a military town. We pay tribute to the sacrifices of our veterans, and each year we have programs for Iwo Jima, for Guadalcanal, for Vietnam, and for Iraq and Afghanistan. April, a year ago, we had General Mattis here talking to the veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan, and we had a full theater downstairs. And it was a great presentation, as, as it is whenever General Mattis addresses a group. And at the end, he opened it up for questions. And a bunch of people in the audience had recognized me, so they knew who I was. They knew I was the Terminal Lance guy. So they started egging me on. They were like, dude, you got to ask your question. And so I was like, okay, fine. Do you read Terminal Lance? And if you do, what's your, your favorite comic? Lance Corporal is a very esteemed rank. Um, <laughs> I do read Terminal Lance, and I, uh, I, I enjoy being made fun of at times. It just shows we got to keep our sense of humor. The grimmer things are, the more need there is for humor and keeping our respect for each other and being able to poke a little fun at each other, too, I think is a, a great thing, and I salute you. We didn't fight for freedom of speech not to practice it, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you make fun of me again, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> feel a lot of love tonight from not only the people that came out, but also the Marines Memorial Club. It is a great organization and they're really hospitable. They love Marines. It's all about Marines and military also. All other branches of military are welcome here too. Uh, and um, really an amazing, beautiful hotel. Um, and, you know, as a Marine, I've never felt more welcome in my life. I told him to go to hell. It's our bell. <laughs> and on top of it, the bell has got to be in safe quarters day and night, 24 hours a day, and that's where it's been ever since, and it's down here in the Marine Memorial Club today. So we feel that we're a part of this very, very historical building in San Francisco, and thank, thank the dear Lord that is here. Well, and I'd like to welcome you for our next installment of our Meet the Author program. We exist to honor the legacy of military service, through a living memorial, which is this building that you're in, and the purpose of that is to commemorate, educate, and serve. We do that for veterans of all eras, of all services. There are times that a military mom outranks a two-star general. <laughs> and for those of you tonight and all of the families who have lost the light of their lives, they can say to every American that it was my boy or it was my girl who stood their post and did their duty <clears throat> into eternity. With each box that uh, we put together, I also say a little prayer and, and, and blessing upon it, just to let them know that not only we here at home uh, appreciate what they do, but God above is blessing their efforts as well. The Marine Memorials Club is a unique institution, a living memorial for all veterans never to forget the price of liberty that we've paid in this country. So the Marine Club remains relevant. It remains relevant because of you. And so as we recognize you, we thank you for what you bring to us. This theater floor is not just a theater floor. This building is not just a building. It's symbolic of who we are. It is the West Coast Tongue Tavern of the United States Marine Corps. For those of you that are here tonight, thank you for supporting the Marines of Morrow. For all your members, your years of support, it's wonderful. Happy 241 years of Marine Corps and happy 70 years of Marines Memorial Association, Marines Memorial Club. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to General Anthony Zini and remain standing for the entrance of the colors and the playing of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, our national colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. On November 1st, 1921, John Lee Lejeune, 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps, directed that a reminder of the honorable service of the Corps be published by every command to all Marines throughout the globe on the birthday of the Corps. Since that day, many have continued to distinguish themselves on many battlefields and foreign shores in war and in peace. On this birthday of the Corps, therefore in compliance with the will of the 13th Commandant, Article 38, United States Marine Corps Manual, edition of 1921, is republished as follows. On November 10, 1775, a Corps Marine was created by a resolution of the Continental Congress. Since that date, many thousand men have borne the name Marine. In memory of them, it is fitting that we who are Marines should commemorate the birthday of our Corps by calling to mind the glorious, long, and illustrious history. The record of our Corps is 
It's one which will bear comparison with that of the most famous military organizations in the world's history. During 90 of the first 146 years of its existence, the Marine Corps has been in action against the nation's foes. From the Battle of Trenton to the Argonne, Marines have won foremost honors in war. And in the long eras of the tranquility at home, generation after generation of Marines have grown gray in war in both hemispheres. And in every corner of the seven seas, that our country and its citizens might enjoy peace and security. In every battle and skirmish since the birth of our Corps, Marines have acquitted themselves with the greatest distinction, winning new honors on each occasion until the term Marine has come to signify all that is highest in military efficiency and soldierly virtue. This high name of distinction and soldierly repute, we who are Marines today have received from those who have preceded us in the Corps. With it, we also receive from them the eternal spirit which has animated our Corps from generation to generation and has been the distinguishing mark of Marines of every age. So long as the spirit continues to flourish, Marines will be found equal to every emergency in the future as they have been in the past. And men of our nation will regard us as worthy successors to the long line of illustrious men who have served as soldiers of the sea since the founding of our Corps. The inspiring message of our 13th Commandant has left its mark in the hearts and minds of all Marines. By deed and act from Guadalcanal to Iwo Jima, from Incheon to the Korean Armistice, in interventions from Lebanon to the Dominican Republic, from the opening battles of Vietnam to the Mayanese rescue, and in Desert Storm and Enduring Freedom, Marines have continued to epitomize those qualities which are their legacy. The success they have achieved in combat and the faith they have borne in peace will continue. The Commandant and our many friends have added their hearty praise and congratulations on this, our 241st birthday. Traditionally, regardless of location, Marines pause to observe the birthday by sharing a cake and usually a holiday meal. A sword is used to cut the cake as a reminder that we are a band of warriors committed to carrying that sword so that our nation may live in peace. The first piece of cake is presented to our guest of honor in recognition of his outstanding service to our country. The second piece of cake is presented to the Ellis Marine present this evening, demonstrating the honor and respect accorded to experience and seniority. Our oldest Marine present this evening is Major George W. Parker, Jr., United States Marine Corps retired, born 19 October 1918. The third piece of cake is given to the eldest Marine to pass to the youngest Marine present, symbolizing the passing of traditions from eldest to younger. The youngest Marine present is Lance Corporal Eric A. Starling. He was born 28 February 1996 in Alexandria, Virginia. He enlisted in the Marine Corps on 19 October 2015 and is currently assigned to Lima Company, 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines as an infantry assaultment.
Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the board, Rains Memorial Association, Mr. Barry Graham. On behalf of the Marines Memorial Association Board of Directors, uh, welcome. We're glad to have you here tonight. Uh, we've got our Marine family, uh, many of you from our sister services, and a special welcome to those of you from the business uh, and leadership community who've joined us tonight. It's been a tough uh, 18 months uh, for the country. We've gone through a very contentious campaign, and I think it's probably time uh, tonight to get together, uh, celebrate, have a good time, and have a party. And that's what we're gonna do tonight. We'll start it here in San Francisco. It's now my privilege to introduce our special guest of honor, uh, General Tony Zinni, who is a warrior, a diplomat, a teacher, and a scholar. Tony started his Marine Corps career as an infantry platoon commander in Vietnam. He was with 1-5, he was badly wounded, and he took the leadership lessons he learned on the battlefield through his 39-year career in the Marine Corps. He served in every important position at the battalion, regimental, and division level, including as commanding general of 1MEF, the Marine Expeditionary Force in Somalia, and then being named director of CENTCOM, commanding general responsible for all combat op operations in the Middle East. When Tony retired, President Bush named him Special Envoy to the Middle East. And that was because of General Zinni's relationships he'd built up in the Middle East, not only with political leaders, but also with the military leaders on both sides. Tony has taught at Duke and at Villanova, became chairman of BAE Systems, has two master's degrees, and now he's getting a PhD in leadership from Creighton University. I'm trying to imagine being the leadership instructor for Tony Zinni. <laughs> he uh, is also a best-selling author who wrote a book, and I encourage you to go back and look at the book, which is named Before the First Shots Are Fired. And it's wise advice for all of us, meaning let's prevent the next conflict through security and relationships. We're also proud to have uh, Tony as our vice chairman at the Marines Memorial. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to serve as uh, chairman, and I've been chairman now, this is my third year, and someone asked uh, Tony last night, they said, well, why is uh, Graham chairman again if you're vice chairman? And without skipping a beat, Tony said, we're gonna make him do it till he gets it right. <laughs> we saw the best of Tony Zinni uh, which you saw referenced in the, uh, the film clip up here of the Marines Memorial Association. We had a salute to Vietnam veterans uh, last year. Uh, Tony and Joe Galloway were the uh, speakers, and we had 400 Vietnam veterans at this uh, function. And in the middle of the talk, a protester stood up and started shouting about the war and how it was conducted and how unhappy he was. Uh, and we saw the warrior diplomat come out because without criticizing or in any way denigrating the protester, Tony acknowledged that 40 years later, there's still strong emotions about that war. But then he talked about the pride he had in leading 18, 19, 20-year-old Marines in combat under the most difficult conditions where they served with honor and pride. So it was uh, something we were all uh, proud of, and if you go on the videotape, there's, uh, you, can, you can watch it on YouTube, but what I recognized from that night, Tony did two things. He honored the Vietnam veterans who had served, and he also saved the life of that one protester who was <laughs> among that. So, Please, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor, General Tony Zinni. Thank you. Marines, family Marines, friends of Marines, brothers and sisters from our comrades in arms from the other services, it's an honor to be with you tonight to celebrate our birthday. I was uh, looking at the Commandant's message and it's the first time I've seen it. And it's remarkable 
because when I was thinking about how to capture what the birthday celebration means to us as Marines, it immediately came to mind of my 50th reunion of my basic school class, which took place last month. And I want to share with you some of the events that took place, some of the comments that were made, and some of the things that really brought out, in my mind, what it meant to be a Marine, because I saw it manifested in the few that are remaining from my 50-year class reunion, and what happened to them at Quantico. And when we all arrived at Quantico, I wasn't sure what everybody was going to look like, how many were still around. My basic school class uh, lost 20 of our members in Vietnam. We had one POW that was in a POW camp in North Vietnam for five and a half years. And of course, most of us had not gone past our initial four-year term. All of us had been to Vietnam a lot of Purple Hearts in our class. And when we all arrived at the hotel, it was interesting looking at everybody. I took particular pleasure in all those that were studs when we were second lieutenants and what they look like now. <laughs> and we kind of melted together all of a sudden. It was like we never left. The camaraderie, the flame of what it was to be a Marine didn't matter whether you stayed in 39 years or four. It all came back with a big rush. We also rushed to the bar. And I got to tell you, the sea stories flowed almost as much as the beer. And some of them were actually true. <laughs> I watched all my comrades from 1965, 66. And what really came into my heart was the fact that whatever the core imprinted in them lasted forever. It was something that no one could ever take away. Quantico was kind enough to have us visit OCS and basic school, tour the base, and most importantly, meet today's Marines. Now, we were pretty cocky when we got on the bus to go out there. You know, we were the old Corps. And each one of us was thinking it couldn't have been as tough as it was for us. We were the class of 1,000 965 BC, before Kami's. And we knew we were tougher. As the bus pulled up to OCS, two companies of candidates marched by. And I heard someone in the back of the bus, someone who had just had those four years and really hadn't kept up with the Corps that much, look out in astonishment and said, look, girls, because we all knew that the urban legend was true, that we were given saltpeter in our food, and there was no way there could be girls at OCS. We were now convinced that this wasn't the old core, until we stepped off the bus and saw the CEO of OCS, the sharpest woman Marine Colonel you would ever meet. And she immediately began to tell us about the school and humor us and about what our young Marines today that aspire to be officers go through. The question started to come from the old Corps. Are the barracks air conditioned? Yes, eh, I thought so. You know. <laughs> Is the hill, hill trail still as high as it was? Has to be worn down since our day. And we started to be pretty cocky on what we were. But it all began to change as we went out and we mingled with the officer candidates. And as we went through Quantico, with the enlisted Marines, with the NCOs and staff NCOs, with the young officers going through training. And I began to see in my old comrades a tear in the eye, a smile in the face, and a number of them came up to me, and, and Butch Neal, our former assistant commandant, since we were the, the ones that stayed in the longest in our class, and the pride that they just, you could, you could, you could feel it in what they had seen, in the young Marines that they had touched. And they kept saying to us, good God, look, you know, the Corps is as great as it ever was. These are magnificent men and women. And it touched me there that those of us that have been around for a long time, that celebrate being a Marine, think about our past and what we went through, when we touch the Marines of today, and we see what they've done. We know the traditions. We know the spirit 
of what it means to be a warrior and a Marine is carried on. My son's a Marine. I'm extremely proud of him. Three tours in Afghanistan, one in Iraq, you know, uh, and, and committed to the Corps as any of us were ever committed to the Corps. General Neller, our Commandant, faces an uncertain future. Budget cuts, we're uncertain about the threats that face us. And what I hear about the approaches he takes, it's the same ones I've heard from commandants like General Wilson, General Barrow, and General Gray, where we use our innovation, we use our spirit and our warrior ethos, where we use our sense of readiness. And I think it was best captured by General Gray when he was our commandant, somebody asked him about the Marine Corps and where does it go from here? It was one of those times that constantly hit us about what is the future of the Corps? And General Gray said, I will tell you a few things about the Corps. When our country calls, we will come. When we come, we will be ready. And when we get there, we will fight. And that's what we're all about. It's the spirit of the warrior. It's not only in every one of us that ever wore the uniform, it's in every one of those Marines you saw on this stage, every one of those Marines that are serving around the world. You know, it is in our blood, and it will be in our blood as long as the United States needs a Corps, and it will for the foreseeable future and long after that. Happy birthday, Marines, and God bless our Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, going to conclude our, our formal program for tonight, uh, our speech for tonight. But we have uh, one uh, final uh, number, I believe, before we uh, head upstairs. I want to thank you again for joining us tonight. And I also want to thank Richard Evans, who played the piano for us, uh, Nova Jimenez and Susana Jimenez, who did our vocals. Please join me in a round of applause for them again. And also uh, Eric Stratman for uh, arranging the music tonight. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battles in the air on land. First to fight for right and freedom And to keep our honor clean We are proud to claim the title Of United States Marine.